Well, welcome back. Our topic today is graphing trig functions on the calculator. So do yourself a favor. Do not waste your time if you're not sitting here with a calculator. You need to pause it and go and grab it. If you're not working with us, then you're going to be clueless tomorrow in class, and we're not going to reteach this. So go get your calculator and play along with me here. First and foremost, when we graph trig, we have to check our mode. Okay, when we graph trig, we need to be in radian mode. So you'll notice when we did all of that law of sines and law of cosines, we needed to be in degree mode. But we're going to have to switch sometimes. So you're going to have to pay very close attention on the test. 99% of the time you should be in degree mode unless you're graphing. Then you need to switch it to radian mode. So go ahead and hit that mode button. It should be next to your second key. And look down. We want to make sure we convert ourselves to radian mode right now. Example 1. The temperature of in an office is controlled by an electronic thermostat. Perhaps you will have one at home. You have a thermostat that controls your, the heat in your house. The temperature varies according to the sinusoidal function. Now, maybe you've heard of this word, maybe you haven't. Take a guess what word it comes from, sinusoidal. Well, it comes from the word sine. It's the part of the sine graph is all it's saying. And they're given this equation. Now, here's the important stuff. Y represents the temperature in degrees Celsius and x is the time in hours past midnight. Okay, we're going to come back to that over and over. y is the temperature in degrees Celsius, and x is the time in hours past midnight. So my first goal is to get a nice sketch of this down. Okay, now, before we even start, they're going to tell us where to graph from. So number one here says graph this function for 24 hours. So what I want you to do is go ahead and throw that in your calculator. Now be very smart. Where they have parentheses, you need to put parentheses. Another tip, as long as you have that updated calculator, you should be using the fraction tool when you see it, when you see a fraction. Okay, and that's your alpha y equals. If you don't have it, again, this is going to need its own set of parentheses. So take your time and type that in your calculator. Pause it and go ahead. Okay, now here's where our thinking comes in. You can't just hit graph you have to set the window up exactly how you want to see it. So, we're going to hit the window button and copy this down as well. Okay, our x values they told us. x represents the time and hours past midnight and they want to see this for 24 hours. So we're going to start our hours, our x min, we're going to start counting at 0 and we want to see it for 24 hours. So my x max is going to be 24. And on your screen, you should see an X scale, and we're going to count by ones, of course. Most people count from one when they count from zero to 24. Okay, so that we should be hitting window, and again, this should be on paper, and we're typing this in our window. Now they ask about the Ys. And again, here's where you have to be smart. You have to ask yourself, was there a vertical shift of this graph? And hopefully you're saying, yes, there was. I would say right here at this 19 is what shifted my graph. Remember, the vertical shift is outside. So I know, wherever this graph started, let's say it normally starts at the origin, I shifted it up 19. Okay, I went up 19 units. Now from there, what is my amplitude? Well, that's this number in front of sine. I would say I have an amplitude of 6. So from 19, I know I'm going to go up 6, and I know I'm going to go down 6. Okay, so I'm going to say to get my max, I'm going to need 19 plus 6, which is 25, and I'm going to go a little bigger. Maybe I'm going to say my uh, y max is, I don't know, 30. I'm just going to go bigger than what it shows. Okay, but I have to hit at least 25. And again, why is that? There was a vertical shift of 19, so it shifted me up 19, and an amplitude of 6. I have to go 6 above that. And I'm going to keep, if I'm going to check my min, of course. I'm going to have 19 minus 6 which of course is just 13, um, but I'm going to keep my y min at 0. Okay, so let's check our y min on our graph. y min should be at 0. And again, most people like to count by 1, so I'm going to say my scale is 1. Okay, so you have to come up with this on your own. So if you, you know, if I went too fast for you, pause it, rewind it, and see if you can come up with it on your own. Listen again. Okay. So you've hit your window button and you've typed all of this in. Now you can hit the graph key and it should nicely graph this for you. 
So here's a nice picture of my screen. Hopefully your calculator shows the same thing. If not, maybe you missed a parenthesis, maybe you typed your window in wrong, but I think you can see that I've gone from 0 to 24. They said 24 hours. And we said we know we had a max um, at 25, but I went a little above so I could see it all. And we knew our min, and I just went, you know, I started at 0. Anyways, you're going to be asked some questions about this graph now. Now, typically, we would put this on graph paper. Um, so you've got your, you know, your graph paper. We're going to count. We're going to plot all those points. Now, how do you get those points? Okay, so let's make a note to plot our points. We're just going to go to our table, which, of course, is second graph. And you will see all the points you're going to plot. Okay, question B. So what part A was to graph it, part B. What is the maximum temperature and when does it occur? So there's two questions in there. What is the maximum temperature and when does it occur? Well, just looking at my graph, I think it's pretty obvious that it occurred, well, when and where it occurs. I would definitely say it's that point right at the top there. Now, there's two ways to get it. There's one just based off the equation. Remember, we had a vertical shift of 19. That's the number outside. And we know we have to add 6, our amplitude. So again, amplitude, vertical shift. I have to add that 6 to get my max. So I know my maximum height is 25. Now, do I know when that occurs? Well, I, I can eyeball it and kind of guess when it occurs. I know it occurs someplace in there. It looks like that's the highest point. But we're going to find out exactly when it occurs. And again, we're talking calculator stuff now. So grab that calculator. And we're going to write this in our notebook first, how to find a max. Okay, You're going to hit second, jot these down, trace. Okay, Under second trace, you have lots of options. It says value, zero, minimum, maximum, intersection, etc. We want to find the max, so you're going to choose maximum. Now, there's going to be several questions to answer on your calculator. So you'll notice when I hit that second trace max, there's a question that appears at the bottom of my screen. It asks, question mark, am I left bound? And what does that mean? Well, you know your max is about here, and the question saying, is your cursor to the left of it? Now, our cursors may not be in the exact same spot, but you need to put your cursor someplace to the left of that max, and then hit enter. Now it will pose a new question. This time my screen says right bound and again I just have to go someplace to the right of my maximum. Okay, It can be any place over here um, but just make sure it's to the right and we don't again we don't have to have the same value just click enter on someplace to the right of that value. And then it'll ask you a third question. It'll ask you to guess basically just hit enter again. You're just taking any random guess so hit enter and it will tell you the exact value of your max and where it is. And you can see here that it says the exact max occurred okay, at x equals 17 and it's telling me that the, the y value equals 25. Okay, so now I'm going to answer the question. And if I scroll back, I'm just going to re remind myself of what that question was. What is the maximum temperature and when does it occur? What is the maximum temperature and when does it occur? And I just want to recall, recall that Y is the temperature in degrees Celsius. Those were in the directions. So I would say the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. And X is the time in hours past midnight. So let's think about this. It occurs 17 hours but past midnight, after midnight. What time is that? 17 hours past midnight is the maximum temperature. Well, let's think about it. If I'm starting here, and this represents midnight, okay, and I go 12 hours, what does 12 hours represent? 12 hours past midnight would be noon. And if I have to get to 17, that would be five more hours. So I would say that's representing 5 o'clock uh, p.m., now, that's a pretty reasonable time, I would say. You know, think about it. Do you want your highest temperature in the building to be when nobody's there? Certainly not. 
Um, the highest temperature should be kind of later in the day while people are still around. Okay, let's answer another question. This time, what is the minimum temperature and when does it occur? What is the minimum temperature and when does it occur? Well, looking at my graph, I mean, I can kind of, again, I can kind of guesstimate. Um, that looks like the minimum temperature and it looks like it occurs sometime in between there. And based off my equation, I can again tell um, what the minimum temperature is. So one more time, the vertical shift is 19. And from there, I have an amplitude of 6. That means I have to go up 6 and I also have to go down 6. So the min would be 19 minus 6. So I would say the min would be 13 degrees Celsius. Okay, but I'm going to verify it with my graphing calculator since that's what we're practicing with. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go back to second trace. And in this time, instead of picking max, we're just going to pick minimum. Okay, you're going to see the same three directions. Left bound, right bound, guess. We're going to play the same game with it. Now, I had to move my cursor quite a bit when I, you know, I did my second trace minimum. My cursor was way up here. I just had to hold it till it came someplace to the left of that point. Now, remember, they don't have to be the same thing. Just put it to the left and hit enter. When you do that, another question will pose just like it did before, and now you have to go to the right bound, right side of that point. So you can see that I've now picked somebody on the right side of the point. There's my point. Hit enter, take a random guess, and it should tell you the exact value. So I'm coming up with a minimum of 5 at y, I'm sorry, a minimum of 13 at x equals 5. So what do these represent again? Well, remember, y represents our degree Celsius. So I would say it has a minimum value of 13 degrees Celsius, which we showed up before without the calculator. And when does it occur exactly? At x equals 5. Now, remember, this is hours after midnight. Five hours after midnight. So, what time is this occurring at? Well, I would definitely say this is happening five hours after midnight would be 5 a.m. in the morning. And does it make sense that the building's probably the coldest at 5 a.m.? Well, nobody's probably there. Maybe it's a department store or something. Nobody's in the building at 5 a.m or an office building or whatever it was. So this should be the coldest temperature and that should make sense. Okay, next part of the question. For what interval of time is the temperature of the building at or above 20 degrees Celsius? All right, so let me stress, we are looking for an interval of time. Okay, and time, remember, is my x value. And I know that I, I re-brought this over here so you could see time is the x value. For what interval of time is the temperature of the building at or above 20 degrees Celsius? Well, what value are they giving you when they say 20 degrees Celsius? Are they giving you the x or are they giving you the y? And you don't have to guess. If you just go back and read it, it'll tell you. Y is the temperature in degrees Celsius. So they're basically telling you y equals 20. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to graph this function, y equals 20, on the same graph. So in y1, you should have your nice big function already in there. So we're going to go back to y equals, we're going to go down to y2, and we're going to graph 20. So go ahead, do so, and I'll show you what my screen looks like. So hopefully your graph looks the same. All I have is that same sinusoidal curve, same sine curve, and I've got this nice line, y equals 20 in there. Now, this is going to make my answer so obvious. It said, um, for what interval time? Is the graph at or above 20 degrees Celsius? Well, what is the first time your graph hits 20 degrees Celsius? I would definitely say that's the first time they meet, right here. And it stays above 20 degrees. Notice my, my temperature is above 20 degrees until I get to this point of intersection. So basically, I just need to find those two points, and I'm good to go. I can write my interval. So to get that first point, Okay, I don't want a max and I don't want a min. I want to find where these two graphs do what? Intersect. So we're going to go back to that same function. You're going to hit second trace. But this time, again, choose intersect. You notice this time it doesn't say left or right. It says first curve. And you don't have to guess. If you look in the corner, it should probably say Y1. Y1 means first curve. Hit enter. 
Now it'll ask another question. It'll say second curve. Again, you don't have to do much. It changed for you most likely. It should say Y2, two meaning second curve. Hit enter. Then it'll ask you to take some random guess. Just hit enter again. And you should get this point of intersection. Now notice it's not gorgeous. It's 11.639, blah, blah, blah. But that is where they intersect. Now, that was the first point of intersection. You need to replay the game and get the second point of intersection. So hit your second trace, but be smart. If you keep hitting all the enters by this one, it's going to keep getting the same one over and over. Move closer to this point and hit your enter on your first, second, and guess. Again, move closer to this one. So this time I got for an intersection point, uh, 22.36, blah, 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 and again at 20. So how am I going to answer this question? The question said, for one interval of time, are you, and st let me stress these words, at or above. Okay, what is the first time I'm at 20 degrees Celsius? Well, let's just round to the nearest tenth. I would say 11.6. And that's the smaller one, so I'm going to say is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to my upper bound, which was 22 point, we'll say 4 to the nearest tenth. So I would say for this interval of time is when I am at or above 20 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to tweak the sentence a little. What if I just said the word above 20 degrees Celsius? What would change in here? Did you guess yet? I would say I would still use 11.6 and I would still use 22.4, but it clearly says above. It doesn't say at. So I would have to say just less than and less than here. Notice I'm not using the equal to if it doesn't say the word at. At means I'm including it, where above does not mean I'm including it. I need to be above that point. Okay, last piece to this question. For how many hours is the temperature above 20 degrees Celsius? Okay, now that probably sounds similar to the question we just asked before we were getting an interval. Now I know how many, I want to know how many hours was I above 20 degrees Celsius. So I hope you would agree you're still going to use these two points. But basically, um, let me recall, let's see, this one was 11.6, I believe we said, the x value, and this one was 22.4. So if I want to know how many hours I was above 20 degrees Celsius, I basically want to know the difference between this point and this point. And that will tell me how many hours I was above 20 degrees Celsius, how many hours I was above that line. So I think you would agree I'm just going to take those two values and subtract them. And that will tell me how many hours I'm above. And I would say that's 10.8 hours that I am at or above 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we did all of that for one question. I just want to practice a few more windows very quickly. So let's say my graph is, uh, my equation is y equals 3 cosine of x plus 8 plus 22. Okay, and you've got to come up with the perfect window. Alright, I need the perfect window. Here's what we're saying one last time. You're asking yourself, what is the vertical shift? Okay, hopefully you're saying you're shifting this graph up 22, that number that you add on at the end. So I'm going 22 units, and from there, I have an amplitude of 3. I have to go up 3, and I have to go down 3. So I know this graph has a max of 25 and a min of 19. So when I go to make my window, I know I have to have a y max of at least 25. It's probably smarter to go above. I would say make it about 30. And would 0 be a fine min? I definitely would say so. That'll clear 19. But again, I would say I need to go from at least 0 to 30. All right, and lastly, for those of you that are still stuck, all those equations we've been doing in class, let's say y equals 2 sine of 2x. Okay, if you are truly still stuck, the calculator can do it for you. So let me just run through on what we want your calculator to do. Clearly you're putting this in y equals. Okay, you have to set your window. Let's say I want to graph this from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, you've got to check your mode. You have to be in radian mode. 
Okay? You're going to go to your window button. Your x min is going to be 0. Your x max is going to be 2 pi. Now here's the important one. Your x scale. What is the first tick mark we make when we count our scale? Do I put a 1 there? Heck no. I put pi over 2. That's what you want your scale to be, your first tick mark. Uh, y min, okay, be smart. Amplitude is 2. How low is your graph going to go? Down 2. Y max, my graph is going to go up 2. Now be smart on your scale here. If you're counting from, you know, up and down 2, typically you count by 1s. So that's what your scale should be. Give it a whirl, see what you get. So here's what my graph looked like. You'll notice the four tick marks. Put it in pink here. Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And again, it's only counting that way because I said count by pi's over 2, my first tick mark. It went from 0 to 2 pi. I have a min of negative 2 and a max of 2. So the calculator can do it. Just make sure you are in radian mode. Now, 99% of the class want to be in degree mode, so pay close attention to that. Well, have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.